In the never-ending debate about the best basketball player ever, one NBA legend has jumped into the ring to throw punches at LeBron James' legacy. The basketball world is divided on who deserves to be called the greatest of all time, or the GOAT. This unexpected challenger has started a firestorm of debate with fans, analysts, and players questioning everything they thought they knew about LeBron's dominance on the court. But who is this brave rival, and how does he argue against LeBron's position as a basketball superstar? Prepare for an epic battle between NBA legend and the king himself that will echo throughout basketball history. Will LeBron James' success hold up to the test? Tracy McGrady, a former NBA superstar and Hall of Famer, told the truth about the GOAT argument. He made some good points in favor of Michael Jordan, but the big knockout punch was about how well MJ did in the clutch. T-Mac couldn't say enough good things about Jordan's ability to shine under pressure and not give up when it meant the most. But when it came to LeBron James, he wasn't shy. T-Mac made fun of LeBron's performance in the 2011 NBA Finals, calling it a big black mark on his GOAT resume. T-Mac says that a player who does that badly in the Finals can't be compared to the legendary Michael Jordan, who never had a run that bad. However, when the playoffs began, LeBron's performance could have been better, and though he scored 20 points and grabbed 7 rebounds, he wasn't the team's best player. D-Wade still held that title. After almost a decade, LeBron's poor performance in the 2011 NBA Finals has become the stuff of basketball legend and a common way to talk about how bad he did. Remember how good the Miami Heat were? LeBron, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh were among the top 15 NBA players when they were younger. T-Mac even claimed that LeBron and Wade could have been in the top five or even the top three. There was no doubt about the ability. So, let's look at each part. When the playoffs started, Miami had already won two of the three games and was ahead 2-1. to one. How did LeBron play? Well, it wasn't amazing, but he did all right. He scored 20 points and got seven rebounds, which isn't bad. But let's be honest, he could have been a better player on the team. D-Wade was still the best. LeBron's failure in the 2011 NBA Finals hurt his chances of becoming a GOAT, while Michael Jordan's ability to win when it mattered most was real. People, this is an argument for the ages, and T-Mac knows how to get things going. Stay tuned for more talk about hoops and strong views. As the Finals progressed to Game 5 and beyond, LeBron's struggles continued, and his inability to produce at a high level in the fourth quarter ultimately contributed to the Miami Heat's downfall, leading to their loss in Game 6 and the championship. Let's discuss how badly LeBron James did in the 2011 NBA Finals. In Game 4, when the Heat were ahead 2-1, to one, LeBron shot poorly and only scored 8 points. How can that be? Michael Jordan had at least 10 points in the playoff game. That's a lot of the same right there, but it gets even worse. In that same game, LeBron's teammate Chris Bosh got more points than him, and even Dwayne Wade beat him. And let's not forget about the Mavericks. Dirk Nowitzki, Sean Marion, Tyson Chandler, Jason Terry, and Deshaun Stevenson all have more points than LeBron. When we got to Game 5, things were still the same. In the fourth quarter, LeBron scored only two points. Ouch. And that's when the Miami Heat's luck started to go downhill. They choked away the title by losing Game 6 by more than 10 points at home. Even though the Heat were up 2-1 to one in the series, they lost because young LeBron was having trouble. In Game 4, 5, and 6, which were very important, he scored only 15.3 points on 44% shooting. On top of that, he only made 17% of his threes and 40% of his free throws. Even when surrounded by superstar teammates like Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, LeBron could not outshine them in scoring, while Jordan consistently remained the top scorer for his team during the playoffs. Now, let's see how that compares to Michael Jordan. He never had a championship series in which he scored at least 26.6 points. That's a lot of power to score with. And LeBron's disappointing 17.8 points per game in the 2011 NBA Finals is far from what Jordan did. Even his superstar teammates, Wade and Bosch, were better than LeBron in that game. Jordan was always the team's top scorer in the playoffs. He was never even close to being third. Michael Jordan's Bulls held an astonishing record of 24-0 in the playoffs when they were the top seed or tied for the top spot, highlighting their unmatched dominance. Despite Dwayne Wade's impressive performance as the Heat's leading scorer, he never outscored or averaged more points than MJ, proving Jordan's status as the true superstar. Let's talk about the 2011 Very Close Finals. The Dallas Mavericks came out strong. Dirk and Jason Terry scored more points than LeBron James, Wade, and Bosch. That's no easy thing to do. Let's remember how Michael Jordan got started. Terry Cummings scored more points than him in his first playoff match in 1985, but after that, it was all MJ. 
From 1986 to 1998, he was without question the team's top scorer and brightest star. The 2011 playoffs were not a walk in the park, though. Even though LeBron was having trouble, the Heat were ahead 2-1, so they still had a chance to win. The series was close, with Dallas winning by an average of just 2.4 points over Miami. If LeBron had scored just one more basket and made those free throws, the Heat could have won the championship. Here's where things get hard for LeBron's reputation, though. You can't blame the Heat's loss on him alone like you can with Jordan. He did have some bad times, but he wasn't the only one that didn't make it. It's a hard pill for LeBron fans to swallow. Now, check this out. 24 times in the playoffs, Jordan's Bulls were either the top seed or tied for the top spot. What do you think their record is? A beauty of a score, 24 and zip. Yes, they couldn't be stopped in those cases. And here's the kicker. Dwayne Wade was on fire the whole playoffs and was the Heat's best player, even better than LeBron. He held the team in scoring with 24.5 points per game on 48.5% shooting. But MJ's best friends never scored more points than him or averaged more. He was the real superstar. First, let's talk about Scottie Pippen. He scored at most 22 points in any game or playoff run, even at his best. Did you know that he only scored 20 points with Michael Jordan twice? Not the most reliable scorer now, is he? Let's go back to 2011, when LeBron James finally beat Boston. But hold on, he wasn't even the team's best scorer in that series. Dwayne Wade stole the show by scoring 37 points and dishing out five assists while hitting an amazing 52%. He was better in every way than LeBron. Imagine if, when the Bulls played Detroit in 1991, Scottie Pippen was their best player. Compared to MJ's favorite game, Scottie averaged 30 points, seven assists, five boards, and a 54% shooting percentage. Scottie was great, but Jordan was better. And then in the game that decided the series against Detroit, Michael Jordan brought his A game scoring 29 points, getting 8 boards, and giving 8 assists while shooting 64.7%. Scotty was good too, but let's be honest, he wasn't better than Michael Jordan. Let's talk about fourth quarter problems now. In the 2011 playoffs, LeBron's play wasn't very good when it mattered most. Let's break these series winners down. Dirk was the best shooter, followed by Dwayne Wade, Terry, and Chris Bosch. LeBron, Mario Klamers, and Haslam all tied for fifth place, but here's the kicker. LeBron's shooting wasn't as good as Haslam and Mario's in his prime. LeBron was seventh in the playoffs for how he played in the fourth quarter. But the legendary MJ was always among the top five players in any championship or playoff game. Jordan always had a series that was better when it mattered than LeBron's. And now, let's talk numbers. In 1997, when the Bulls played the Jazz, Michael Jordan scored 10.7 points per game in the fourth quarter and shot 49% better than everyone else. Even though he was 35 years old in 1998, he still averaged 10.6 points per game and led the series to a title win. He hasn't slowed down by his age. The discrepancy in their fourth quarter performance is a defining factor that sets Jordan apart from LeBron, solidifying his legacy as a player who consistently delivered in critical playoff situations. Here's the mind-blowing part. In Game 6 against the Jazz in 1998, Michael Jordan scored 16 points in the fourth quarter, which was a big deal. But LeBron only scored 18 points in the fourth quarter during the 2011 series. That's a huge difference between the two of them right there. Jordan played well in the playoffs and kept his 6-0 record, while LeBron had some ups and downs and ended up with a 4-6 record. In the ongoing fight for the title of greatest of all time, one NBA legend has dealt LeBron James' legacy a devastating hit. The comparison between Michael Jordan's unmatched ability to perform under pressure and LeBron's struggle in key times has sparked heated debate in the basketball community. As we watch this massive battle, we can't help but wonder, will LeBron James' success hold up against Michael Jordan's unbreakable legacy? Who will be the best of all time in the end? Fans, analysts, and players are all interested in this historic discussion because the question remains open. Time will show us the answer, but until then, people will keep talking about it, which will continue to shape basketball's past. So that's all for today's video. If you like this video, Click the like button and the notification bell. We'll have another video for you soon. Take care until then.